Comparison, part two. Comparing yourself to other trades, businesses, brackets, benchmarking is good. Now, I wrote a video last week or the week before about how comparison is the thief of joy, which it is, right? Which was about the unreliability of looking at how well someone's doing, somebody else, you know, who you might compare yourself to, how well they're doing, and comparing yourself to that and feeling poor in comparison if they're doing better than you and not knowing what advantages or head starts they might have had. That's an unreliable thing. It doesn't help you much, except to make you feel bad if you're not doing as well, right? But the second part of the title, so how do you compare? Which I kind of left alone, except to say, if you're not doing well as you'd like, maybe you've got some work to do, and maybe you should buy my program, which I thought was a great segue, right? So, you know, the second part is, so how do you compare? And it's that that I want to talk about today, right? Despite the dangers in comparing yourself, because it makes you feel bad, or it might, it can also be very useful. I'm sure you spend a bit of time thinking about what you're doing right and wrong, don't you? We all do. I do. Right? Comparing what you're doing to what other successful people are doing is very useful in this regard, right? You notice the difference between how I'm talking about how well they're doing compared to you and what they're doing that you might also be doing or perhaps should also be doing. You should definitely look at what other successful people are doing, what other successful tradies and builders are doing that's making them successful and you should think about whether you ought to be doing it, right? That's a reasonable thing to do. Now, we do it in my coaching program, and there's a few ways we can do it, which I'm going to explore, of course. Right? We call it benchmarking. Everyone calls it benchmarking. That's not my word. I didn't make that up. Right? You can benchmark against industry benchmarks or industry standards for things like gross margin and net margin. My clients do that. Right? Ask for the benchmarks guide. Right? Benchmark if in the comments or something, and we'll send you the guide. I've written a guide. Okay? The benchmarks are different for builders and for other trades. So just note that if you're a builder, you, you know, your benchmarks, your margin guides, if you like, are different for if you're not a trade. And you can kind of benchmark, not really, but sort of, for how much revenue you should have per tradesperson and how much you should be paying your tradespeople and how much you should be charging them out at, your charge out rate. I'll share the benchmarks for margins in the guide and I'll share like a capacity calculation tool, right? For how much you're paying people and charging out, it's too broad and it's too complex to give you a real benchmark. I'll show you in a minute what I mean. Okay, it's too complex and broad to make sense in a little ebook, a little downloadable worksheet. The range is broad, right? People are paying apprentices $22 an hour and they're paying tradespeople between 40 and 60 and 65 on wages and more if not on wages, if on subcontract. Right, so that's too broad, doesn't help anybody in the worksheet. So better to download our labor cost calculator, which you can request in the comments, and calculate your actual labor cost, and then add your gross margin, the one in the benchmark, to decide what your charge out rate should be, okay? That's a better way of doing it. Just saying, what are people charging? It's too broad, okay? And my clients compare pay rates and charge out rates in our workshops, and that helps people feel more confident to charge a bit more, usually, okay? But you need to compare to like a similar trade, right? It's no use comparing carpenters to electricians and plumbers. They're, they're different trades, the benchmarks are a bit different. That won't translate to a worksheet either. So I'll say this, trades who work all day on site need to be charging more than 80 bucks an hour and maybe 100. And trades who travel between jobs all day need to be up at 120, 130 and more per hour. If you're below those benchmarks, Think about charging more. Now, the last thing you can benchmark after you check your margins, after you check your revenue per trade person, and after you check your prices and your pay rates, is what you're doing compared to what other people are doing. Right? And I'm wrong, of course. You can benchmark anything, right? If you can get enough data and you can crunch it. But let's focus on what's practical for us today, right? For tradies right now. You can look at what other successful trades businesses are doing for marketing, for sales, how they're managing jobs how they're managing their money, how they're managing their people, how they're managing themselves. Right, you can talk to other tradies, you know. Right, You can talk to other tradies who are building their businesses in my program. Here's the plug, okay? You can join my program even. Ooh, didn't think I was going to get there, did you? Now, you can book a call if you're interested in joining my program and we'll take you through that process. There's a process. Or you can come for free as a guest to one of our quarterly intensive workshops for a day, right? That's a full day where you can scope like the whole thing out and see what we do, okay? So your choices in response to this video are Benchmark, calculator, book me a call, or I'd like to come to a workshop. All right, see ya.